Hey guys, this is Mark here from PFT and today we are going to be doing an unboxing and overview of the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition. Now this is the top end camera in GoPro's lineup. So currently you can still buy ones like the 3 and the 3 Plus, but there are two, um, in fact no, there are three um, kind of top tier the ones they're looking to sell are the basic hero which shoots very kind of low quality but comes in at an amazing price and um, the second one is the gopro hero 4 silver which has lower specs than the hero 4 but it has a built-in touchscreen which is really really handy so it actually shoots at, i believe um 1080p at 60 frames per second and 4k at 15 frames per second so the 4k on that is virtually unusable now the black edition which is the one i have has no built-in touchscreen or anything like that but for me i wasn't really too bothered about the touchscreen i just wanted the performance of the camera so it actually shoots 4k at 30 frames per second which is really really nice 2.7k which is a brilliant resolution at 50 frames per second which is again a brilliant frame rate you could even slow that down a bit if you wanted and 1080p at 100 frames per second now it also does um 240 frames per second but that's an extremely low resolution i think it's something like 800p so you wouldn't really want to use that unless you really really need that extreme slow-mo so um this is going to be kind of more of an overview video but also the unboxing mixed in with that. Now GoPro for a long time has had the reputation of the best kind of well the most famous camera for extreme sports and things like that. Now GoPro is way ahead of the time at the moment. It Not many cameras at the moment shoot 4K and that's even big cameras like my camera my DSLR that I'm recording this on only shoots 1080p and it's huge. The GoPro is a tiny little pocket sized camera that shoots full 4K. Now, albeit it may not be the best lens, it may not be the best sensor, but the fact that it can pack what it has into that form factor is a true engineering miracle. Now, um, for the past couple of years, GoPro has been ahead of the game, but now competitors like Sony with their action camera are beginning to catch up. Now, personally, in my opinion, and in most other people's opinion, GoPro still has that first top-notch place in the world of action cams. But um, with the size of company Sony is and the resources they have, we could definitely see that as a very viable option very, very soon. Now, if you don't know what an action cam is, you could technically use it for videos like this if you wanted. It's brilliant for things like vlogging and things like that because of its size and its quality. But the main purpose of these type of cameras is for extreme sports. Um, so the, f the main kind of feature of the GoPro is A, the kind of accessories and what you can put it on and B, the fact it is fully waterproof. So you can go kayaking, you can go swimming, you can go surfing um, and you can get some really, really nice underwater shots um, and you can attach it to many, many things. So you can clip it onto your bike handlebars, you can put it on a ski pole, you can put it on helmets, which is what most people do and you get things like wrist straps, chest straps, head straps um, so you get tons of different accessories that allow you to get some really amazing shots and since that is such a big part of the GoPro I think I'll actually be doing a video dedicated to the different type of accessories and the different type of shots you can achieve with those accessories. Now moving on to the unboxing portion of this video you can see um, it comes in a really really nice box. Now GoPro is very uniform with all their packaging and they have been ever since the first GoPro was launched. So it's kind of a bit of a showcase of the product. So you have that clear um, a kind of see-through plastic bit on top that shows you the GoPro. Um, it's kind of sitting on a pedestal and then um, that's actually on a kind of mount thing. And underneath that we have the box with information and some spare mounts and things like that. So what you need to do to get into the box is simply pull the tab at the side and slide the bottom box off. Now this is actually a lot harder than it looks and it's almost impossible to do without ripping the box but um, for the presentation I'm willing to live with that. Now as I mentioned the GoPro is actually on its own little special mount on the lid. Now this is a basically a big square of plastic with a GoPro mount in the middle and I've actually used this for a lot of different shots. It's really handy if you want to place it down on a wall or on the ground or something like that because regularly the GoPro will just fall over if you put it down because it doesn't have a flat bottom. So this is a really handy mount and you can also use this for a lot of different DIY things. You could turn this into lots of different mounts 
but it's kind of nice that that comes included and it also has four little sticky feet on the bottom which um, are handy to get a bit of extra grip. Now, once you take that GoPro off the top and open up the box, you have the Get Started Guides on top. Now, on, usually I would say with most products, just throw away the Get Started Guides. For example, with phones and things, most people really don't need a Get Started Guide. With a GoPro, for a lot of new people who aren't used to the GoPro system, the menus can be very hard to navigate and I would definitely recommend holding on to that guide because there's some features that I didn't even know about until I read through it. Now, um, saying that, the GoPro, uh, well, every option before the Hero 4 has been unbelievably hard to navigate. The kind of operating system on it has been really bad. You've really had to know... Um, you you had to you kind of had to know the camera really well to actually be able to go through that system um, and get what you want. But the kind of layout of the menus on this GoPro are much much nicer and much much easier to use. They also include some GoPro stickers that you can put on helmets, cases, things like that. Something that I really like to see in a product. It's not really necessary, but it's nice that they include something like that. Now the first kind of piece of hardware we see is an open skeleton back door. Now this um, will not be waterproof at all, it, it has a huge hole in the back of that door but basically it will give you improved audio quality um, and it will also allow better cooling to the back of the GoPro so um, it will prevent from overheating or anything like that um, and probably improve the lifespan but um, personally I don't like using it because it, it's a bit of a hassle to change and I like it being waterproof all the time because you can use it in the rain and things like that and um, which is really handy. Next we see the battery and I would just like to speak about this for a while so for the size of the battery it is fairly impressive um, I am probably going to pick up another couple of batteries because this really doesn't last long if you're for example out for a day trip and you're shooting all day you're definitely going to need to charge it and um, it's not going to last too long but um, I would say kind of for the size of it and what it is it's quite a good well lasting battery I suppose overall good impressions but um, I would certainly recommend buying a couple more as they're not really that expensive and um, we also have two sticky mounts so we have a curved one which is aimed for things like helmets then we have a flat one which is um, just for sticking on regular surfaces for example a skateboard or something like that and um, basically it's nice that they include these two different shapes of mount so you can stick it um, on whatever kind of surface you want now there's also a uh, handy little rubber stopper now this will prevent vibrations in the base it will keep it in firmer and will improve the audio because you won't get that shakiness as much and um, so I would recommend using that and um, of course you don't have to in the Hero 4 it won't make as much difference as it did in past GoPros but it's a handy thing and quite thoughtful of GoPro to include that. Next we have some of the kind of hardware that you need to use this and hook it up to things so we have some little arm pieces I don't really know how to explain them but the, you can use them um, almost like Lego to get um, your GoPro into different places, into different shots and things like that. We also have a curved riser mount, um, which is basically the same mount that you clip onto the bottom of the GoPro, but it has a small little riser piece. I'll put in some shots of it here, um, and it allows you to get slightly higher off the ground with your GoPro. We also have a USB cable, which can be used for data transfer, so to get your photos and videos from your GoPro to your computer, and it can also be used for charging. Now going back to the GoPro itself, I just have to kind of admire um, how beautiful a camera this is. Um, it's a really, really nice form factor. You can see it comes with the full skeleton housing there, which is what you can use to keep it waterproof. Now, of course, if you're not doing waterproof things, you can just take it out of that and it makes it even smaller. Um, there's three buttons on this GoPro, which are used to, um, for example, start video or um, navigating through the menus. Um, but taking it out of the case, you really see how thin and small this camera is. Um, and I'm still amazed at how they actually managed to get a camera into this small a form factor. On the back, we see a port which is used for some accessories. So um, there's two that I, that I know of. So you can actually buy a screen like the Silver has to stick it on the back. I won't be doing this because it, um, it's kind of expensive. In my mind, it's kind of useless, and it also adds size to the GoPro, which I'm not too keen on. I believe you can also buy an extra battery to put on the back here, which is something that I would definitely be interested in because um, I really love battery life. Um, I would like this to last a full day of filming. Um, that would be really nice. 
either that or just buy some extra batteries to put in. Now comparing it to the size of a Nikon lens, you can see it is probably about a half to a third of the size of my Nikon lens, never mind the camera added to that as well. Now obviously the Nikon camera will get much much better um, quality kind of video, you know there will be better colours, you of course get that nice depth of field with the lens which will not be available in the GoPro, but for action things you can get this in so many places that you aren't able to with other cameras. It's so light, so easy to use and um, the kind of internal specs are so impressive. So alongside the video it also has fairly good photo um, features. So you have um, 12 megapixel stills and a 30 FPS burst mode. To put that in comparison, my Nikon DSLR camera that cost about twice as much as this GoPro has 5 FPS. Now bear in mind it's not something I use my DSLR for, but 30 frames per second photo is very very impressive. Um, and it's something that I really love to see. Now there are some new modes, so we have the regular time lapse, which takes a photo um, every however many seconds, so you can set it to 1, 2, 5, 10, 30, something like that. We also have night lapse and auto night mode, um, or auto ISO or something like that. So the, the auto mode um, allows you to take beautiful night photos, you can almost take some nice kind of nightscape photos with all the stars and with the really huge field of view this GoPro has that is a really really nice feature. We also have as I said night lapse which is basically the same but a time lapse so you can get a nice view of the stars slowly travelling across the sky. Now one of the features that really surprised me personally when I bought this is the fact that you can change the field of view. This is something I've never seen on a camera so you can have the fisheye wide angle look um, and then you can change it to um, medium I believe and then standard so this is really really handy for different shots it means you don't have to have three cameras or three different lenses you can just change individually personally I didn't even know this was possible on a camera now this isn't available at all resolutions and frame rates so for example at 4k you can only have wide you can't crop down to that standard image this will possibly be something we see in the 4 plus or something like that but I really really love that feature. So that is about it for the GoPro, um, uh, or sorry, this video. Now I'll be doing two more videos. I'll be doing the full review, which will probably be out within the next few weeks, but I want to really get to know the camera before I make that video. And as I mentioned earlier, the second video will be the kind of look at all the different accessories and the shots you can get with this GoPro. Now I may also do a few test videos, possibly even a 4K video, um, but let, uh, give me a comment down below, tell me what other coverage you would like to see of this camera as it is kind of a really big thing, um, it's very popular and a lot of people use it so I would like to make more videos kind of educating and showing people how to get better videos with it. So that has been it for this video, thank you very much for watching, if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to say drop it down in the comments down below or email me at the address in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video. See ya.